All right, we've got people trickling in. We will start in about one minute or so. Okay, folks, it is 831. That's around the time that we like to start our Economic Alliance in Homish County coffee chats. Uh, welcome this morning. My name is Gary Clark, President and CEO of Economic Alliance in Homish County. And I am just excited this Tuesday morning for our event. But first things first, if you have your coffee cups, raise them in the air in solidarity. This is going to be a great uh, conversation. Uh, but we have some housekeeping uh, to go over. So remember, folks, as you chime in here, we'd love for you to add your organization name uh, to your piece here on the chat so that we know who you're with. Um, and so when we hover over the name, we know who you are. And then also, we ask that everyone engage in the chat if you have comments or, or questions of our panelists. Uh, this is the great opportunity for us to have that engagement. And this is also a recorded event, so we want to make sure that those, those meaty questions that you have, that we can track those if our panelists want to revisit those later on. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, it is my distinct pleasure to bring on the amazingly talented Angie Sievers, who is leading our Snohomish STEM network, and she's the director and also the co-director of Career Connect Washington. So Angie, uh, who is joining us from a remote space, so give her that uh, space as well. Angie, take it away. Thank you, Gary. Um, welcome everyone um, to this conversation around apprenticeship in our region um, and the opportunity that it brings um, our, our businesses and our, our young professionals. Um, I want to just kick off and just set the stage. The Snohomish STEM Network um, is a consortia of, of education, business, government, um, community-based organizations in Snohomish County with the common purpose of um, creating awareness about the opportunities here in Snohomish County and also preparing youth for those opportunities um, as they graduate from high school or um, post-secondary programs. Um, Additionally, Career Connect Washington is a coalition of industry, labor, education, and community leaders um, who serve to create work-based um, learning and academic programs for young people to explore. So, so they very, um, they just seamlessly fit together. There's already a table within the Snohomish STEM network that is um, in partnership with Economic Alliance. You couldn't be here without Economic Alliance. And then the Career Connect Washington table is a broader table um, within our state. This, um, this chapter serves Snohomish County specifically. Um, so what I wanted to share with you is just to just take a few minutes to sort of set the table for this conversation with our panel experts. Um, in Snohomish County, um, it's to no surprise that and manufacturing, advanced manufacturing um, is, a, is a main, is a key sector in our region. Um, also, uh, construction trades, information technology professionals, healthcare professionals, and now educators. Um, as we face a number of people ready to retire, um, and also the growth in our region, just the economic prosperity that's underway, um, there, there's just a ton of opportunity in these areas. And these, what we're going to speak about today is... Um, careers that are family living wage and above. So in Snohomish County, it's $62,000 and change, um, which two adults um, would support um, two children. So one person working at that rate. And, and the reason we're focused on that is that we know that they can support their families um, equitably in our region. So um, when we look at students in our system, um, Katie, if you don't mind going to the next slide. Um, each year, there are just under 20,000 um, new jobs, and that, that includes those from people retiring and also new um, jobs coming into the market. 
at this range. Um, 79% of those will require a credential. And so I wanna take a minute to define what a credential is. Traditionally, people think college degree. Um, these are one and two year credentials, industry recognized credentials, um, apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship, apprenticeship, two year and four year degree. So anything beyond high school that industry recognizes valuable skill set. Um, what's, what's a little bit concerning to us is that 25% of our, like the current trend show 25% of our students will fill these jobs. So we have this huge gap in um, talent needs. So hence um, our employers are hiring from out of the area um, and we're experiencing a significant amount of growth. So, so it's as a community in our best interest to help our young people understand the great opportunities and the exciting. There's a lot of innovation taking place um, and get them excited about these jobs and then show them how to get the skills and credentials um, that employers are looking for. Um, Katie, last slide, please. So I spoke to this just briefly. Um, this is just a, a simple graph that shows, you know, 20, about 20,000 entry level family living wage jobs per year of which 25% of our students will fill those on an annual basis. So that just like accrues. So if you look at a senior class, even if all of our seniors graduated and within six years achieve these credentials, that's the marker that we're, we're following, um, we still wouldn't fill the demand. So I would just say that um, we could fill every seat at our local community and technical colleges, our four-year programs, all of our apprenticeships, and still have room to grow. So when we talk about apprenticeship, I just encourage everyone to be collaborative, and there's opportunity for everyone. There's resources right now. Um, there's a Career Connect Washington intermediary grant um, that, that will fund some of this work. So um, we're here to support and help and encourage conversation and and connections um, in our community. So um, thank you for, for engaging in this conversation. And um, Gary, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Angie, for uh, that information. It was very much appreciated. Uh, folks, we have some amazing panelists, as Angie's kind of alluded to, uh, who are here to answer some questions and engage us on some information. So if you are attending this uh, coffee chat, please feel free to ask additional questions. First things first, I'd like to welcome and introduce uh, Seth Jacobson. Uh, Seth is the Senior Manager for ATS, and he is here with us. Seth, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we also have the very awesome Dr. Carrie Schroyer, who is actually the Dean of STEM at Edmonds College. Uh, Dr. Troy, we appreciate you being here with us as well. And guess what? We have two additional panelists and I'd like to bring them on as well. We have Lynn Strickland, who is the president of AJAC. And we also have Aaron Williams, who is the business relations uh, Snohomish County person for AJAC. So, I want to welcome all of our amazing panelists and uh, we're gonna dive into uh, some Q&A. But first and foremost, I'd love for each of you to take just a moment to um, give us a, a synopsis of, of who you are and, and your organization. So let's start with uh, in the order that we introduced everyone. So Seth, you have the floor. Thanks, Gary. So my name is Seth Jacobson. I am the Senior Manager of Apprenticeship and Career Development at ATS. So I run the apprenticeship program here. Um, been doing it for, for almost three years. So happy to be here today. Hi, my name is Carrie Schroyer and I am the Dean of STEM at Edmonds College. I've been doing this for about six years. Before that, I was a tenured biology professor and I am very excited to be here and share our programs with you. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Demetria Lynn Strickland. I am the uh, executive director, but I like what Gary said, president, CEO. So I'm gonna talk to my board about a title change for that. Um, <laughs> um, and I have actually been with Ajax since 2012. Um, I became the executive director in 2014. Um, there's a lot to talk about Ajax, but I will just refer you to our website if you want more information about the details and the programs that we offer. We'll get into a little bit of that today. Um, but basically I oversee um, our apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship and youth apprenticeship programs here offered throughout the state of Washington um, for uh, the advanced manufacturing industry. So thank you for allowing us to be here. And I'll pitch it over to Erin so she could talk about what she does up in the Sonoma's area county. Hi, I'm Erin Williams and I'm a business developer, regional program manager, kind of our titles here. And my, I've been with Ajax for over four years. And my region is actually kind of North Seattle up to the border, which very much includes Snohomish County. Uh, and I've, yeah, I've really enjoyed um, getting to work in this, in this area. I've, I now know all the different exits off of uh, I-5, which I <laughs> did not know all of them, but it's been a lot of time up here and I've really enjoyed getting to know uh, so many employers and uh, community partners in the area. I'm to talking to you. All right, well, let's dive into some questions. I have some direct questions for some of you. So uh, feel free if there's some additional uh, content or, or engagement that you'd like to provide, uh, jump in there. But this uh, first question is directed towards uh, Dr. Schroyer. So uh, the quick question that I have for you, Dr. Schroyer, is how do employers work with post-secondary education uh, to develop high quality training programs. And then the second component to that is at Edmonds College, uh, what programs do you have currently in this vein? So Gary, that is a great question. I think we begin by emphasizing the benefits of apprenticeship programs to the community, to the in to industry, and to students. We want to work with industry. We have the resources. We're poised to develop and expand apprenticeship programs to meet industry needs. We know that traditionally apprenticeship programming has proven to be one of the most effective ways to develop highly skilled craftspeople in selected trades, but that's expanding. It's cost effective or it's no longer limited just to skilled trades. It can be expanded into white collar sectors such as finance, such as insurance. Um, and we want to build those programs with active industry partners. A well-designed apprenticeship program is cost-effective, goal-oriented, and it's designed to meet specific employer needs. And once again, I think that's, that's where we want to reach out and we want to work with industry and we encourage industry to work with us. We can develop those programs. We leverage the resources that we have and we have that academic expertise as well as that professional technical expertise to be able to um, create the programs that industry needs to satisfy their unique workforce. And that's what we do. That's uh, awesome. Now, go ahead. It is very awesome actually. So let me go to your second question. So I think um, the two apprenticeship programs that I would like to talk about are our T-Mobile apprenticeship program. That was created in 2020 uh, in partnership with Washington Alliance for Better Schools, um, Edmonds College, uh, Edmonds School District, and T-Mobile. And it's, it's a program designed to help high school seniors work toward careers as full stack software developers. The average T-Mobile starting salary is about $58,000. And this usually requires a four-year degree, but T-Mobile worked with Edmonds School District and Edmonds College to create a two-year program. Students are able to participate in two paid summer internships, and they earn a 59-credit full-stack developer certificate. Uh, the first group of students uh, went through this program in the summer of 2020, and we're very, very proud of that program, and we are hoping to expand it, continue expanding it. Um, the other program that we have would be our certified safety inspector program. Um, and that one is, I'm just trying to make sure that is through the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries, our in conjunction with Washington State Labor and Department of Interesting, or Industries, I'm sorry. And it's a one of a kind apprenticeship program that's tailored to the technical field of occupational safety and health. Um, and the purpose of that program is to provide an alternative option to 
or that combines traditional education and field experience. All right, um, that is a wealth of knowledge and information uh, that can be utilized for uh, multiple businesses in our in our region. And so I really appreciate um, that insight there, Dr. Schroeder. Now let's um, bug Seth here a little bit from ATS. Seth, uh, you all are a major advanced manufacturing supplier and obviously we are thankful for your investment in EASC as well as an organization, um, but you recently unveiled a program in Everett. So tell us what that involved and included for an employer to develop such a program. Sure. Um, thanks, Gary. Yeah. So it really is a major investment and it does take time and commitment. It's taken us a, a lot of time and, and commitment really. Uh, and not just by me. Um, I'm, I'm oftentimes the ones that gets to, the one that gets to talk about it, but um, a lot of people had a hand in crafting our apprenticeship program over the last several years, uh, both inside the company and, and out. So I I'm seeing a lot of faces on here that are some of which are familiar, um, but we've benefited from a lot of positive uh, relationships and partnerships over the years that have been um, a positive influence on, on the way that we view workforce development, on the way we view apprenticeships. So, I mean, the community colleges, Snow Isle, I see on, Snohomish County, of course, um, Ajax, it's good to see uh, Lynn on, um, and STEM, of course, Angie as well. Um, but, and then internally, you know, it, it took several years of preparation. And a lot of that was done before I even came on board. Uh, the basic theory kind of in structure of the program was set up at a high level um, by several company leaders before I arrived. So I, I think I see uh, Dave Bowen, who is actually my boss on today, and he, um, he kind of had a vision for, for some of this. And some of the other, of, our, of our other executives worked with him uh, to kind of set up a, a theory and structure. Um, and then the decision was made to, to hire an apprenticeship manager, which was me. And, uh, and when I arrived, we spent a lot of time working with, with a group uh, in the company, about 15 people um, from all over the organization to help plan the practical details. So, so we really had to bring people together, uh, especially being kind of a you know, mid to larger organization, there was a lot of pieces in play. So we, we had to hire a couple instructors, which, you know, which took some time to find the right people. And we have really good instructors here, which is, which is great. Um, and then with the working group and the instructors, we had to we had to do a lot of a lot of things really. Uh, we had to figure out what an apprentice needed when they first arrived and build all their initial training, and and that took a lot of questions. Um, really trying to understand what does an unskilled, untrained person need to know if they don't have any experience in aviation? What do they need to know to be successful, uh, both with the technical skills and then of course with the with the what we call the soft skills that are just as important as technical skills, the, the work ethic, right? And then once we get that, that initial training, the curriculum built, built out, which is a two to three week initial, initial course, uh, what do they need beyond that to be successful? So how do we pair them with someone that's gonna help them learn? What kind of on the job training curriculum do they need? We had to develop um, a lot of different on the job training books uh, that, that are kind of the, the curriculum for each apprentice. And there's a lot of different skills that we do here. So trying to develop different curriculums for all the different skill sets took a lot of time. And, and once again, a lot of asking questions from the mechanics, from the leads, from the supervisors, the managers on the floor, trying to understand what, 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 you know, what we need to teach them. And some of the stuff for me, um, you know, coming into ATS, I had to learn what, what they needed as well. Um, but once we did that, we were able to launch, launch the program. Um, so and we and even took some work even with the FAA trying to understand what they needed to, to make sure that we steer people in the right direction for their certification down the road. So a lot of practical details over the course of a couple of years, um, all building up to January 2019 when we launched this program. And it, you know, practically speaking, the nuts and bolts will be different company to company, but large scale, I'd say it takes a lot of patience, takes some commitment. Um, you know, it's baby steps forward. And then there's setbacks along the way. But if you keep going forward and you're committed to it, and, and we're thankful to have a good executive leadership team that is that really is committed to this. Um, and that's that's what gets you there. Um, and that's what we've seen. Um, you know, that's where we've seen success. 
All right. Well, I, I'm really impressed. And uh, I know myself and uh, Robin Curtis from our staff, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting you and uh, David and Paul uh, at your uh, awesome facility. So I really appreciate getting the intake and insight on that. Um, so we have some additional questions here, and, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that uh, if you're listening and joining in here, uh, we just have some initial questions for our panelists, and then you do have the opportunity to ask uh, additional questions as we have space. But uh, now we have the opportunity to dive into uh, asking Lynn and Aaron a, a specific question about AJAC. Uh, Lynn and Aaron, uh, what I'd like to know is, you know, you, you all have been, AJAC has been doing a long tenured piece of resource and development as far as quality uh, programs in our state, historically in aerospace. Uh, but I, I'd like to know if you all could share a little bit of that tidbit, but also are there other sectors that you've supported recently? So take it away. So uh, Gary, thank you for that question. And first of all, I'd like to say, I think that this is a great panel because it just shows the, the diversity of what apprenticeship could look like. Um, uh, Dr. Schroyer, uh, they are a community and technical college uh, where employers can work with community and technical co colleges to be able to implement programs. Seth, um, and hello, uh, Dave, uh, our, my former partner in crime here at AJAC. Uh, good crimes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, so that's an employer sponsored program. So that's a really good example. AJAC, we're set up as, a, as an apprenticeship service provider or an intermediary is, is a better term. And what that means is that we kind of sit at the center of it. And then we work with employers, our K through 12, our uh, community and technical mm -hmm. colleges, our workforce development, um, you know, the, just the different, the apprentices, the employers to be able to develop and implement um, develop and implement apprenticeship programs. So we're a different kind of model. Um, and as Gary said that we've traditionally, uh, traditionally when we came out, we were specific to aerospace industry uh, because there was a huge need uh, talking about the things we've been talking about for 20 years, you know, retiring workforce, um, you know, in, in increased globalization, which increases demand um, and, and which uh, advancing technologies, which is creating a little bit of a skills gap, right? Um, so we were specific to aerospace. Um, we had our great community and technical colleges, our K through 12 uh, CTE programs, but there was an absence of apprenticeship. Um, and so we were created in 2008 to, to help to fill that mold of a diversity of a workforce development in that industry. But coming out of the recession of 2008 and 2009, which is a hard time to start an organization, but looking back, um, you know, we really did see um, that there would be strength in diversifying you know, our, our programs and stuff. And so what does that mean? We want Washington State to have a really good workforce development system to be able to attract and retain businesses. And the best way to do that is to be able to expand out and to ensure that we have a, a really good workforce. Um, and so what we did um, is we really um, focused on a couple of different things here. Um, you know, we are a statewide resource and we are based upon employer demand. Um, and so we really did start looking at, could we have programs that cross multiple industries? Uh, if a particular industry is having a challenge, uh, as we've seen in the last couple of years, um, and if those uh, apprentices or those um, employees are laid off, can they use those skills to go to another industry um, within the state? Um, and so we really did look at that. And so since uh, 2014, uh, we really have been looking out uh, at looking at expanding out into different industries, and so now we actually work in six other industries or sub industries beyond aerospace, and that includes agriculture, uh, biomedical, defense, food food manufacturing, manufacturing space. Uh, we're looking at logistics right now, as as with regards to manufacturing, um, and also green technologies and stuff too. So. You know, so when you think of AJAC, uh, sometimes we knock on the door and we're talking to employers. They say, uh, I'm in food processing. What are you doing here as an aerospace? Uh, it's like, so, so the aerospace is in the name, but we really are beyond aerospace. So you think of AJAC, think of AJAC beyond aerospace. And then I'll shoot it over to Aaron to really talk about an example of that. Yeah, we have one of our, our newest um, occupations we're launching and it's definitely by, by winter quarter here soon um, and really promoting it. It's called industrial machine operator. 
and that occupation not only teaches how to operate and conduct preventative ma maintenance on automated machinery used in food manufacturing, but has an emphasis on food safety requirements. And we really saw that as a, um, a need in uh, central Washington, but it's definitely expanded, you know, East Homers County alone here, we have a few different food processing companies. Um, biggest, you know, what work with us now is you know, Trident Seafoods. Uh, different seafood processing are, are up and down. We have uh, natural factors over in Monroe and talking to, and you know they they're in that subsector. So there's there's a lot of opportunity there, and uh, so it was it was this uh, demand that came from industry. That's why we were launching this occupation, and we're really excited about that. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, Ajax is obviously. Uh, sharing that they have an expanded reach, uh, not specifically uh, tied directly to aerospace, but every uh, component necessary. So this is great information. Um, moving along though, I wanna give us a little bit of a, a stopgap here in uh, our conversation because there was a great question asked uh, by Karen, and I thought we'd have Angie uh, just chime in uh, to answer that question. And so Angie, if you want to queue up the question and then answer it, that's totally fine. Sure thing. Um, Karen, great question. So I, I think the easiest way to like organize thought of um, training in general, there's Career Connect Washington is defined three categories, career exploration or awareness, which is um, think of like coming into a classroom speaking, like um, just, just sort of shorter, more um, exploratory experiences. Um, career preparation is the second one. That is internship, job shadow, um, work site tours. Um, so they're shorter in nature than, than a full apprenticeship, but they're longer than just exploring. Like a student will gain skills and awareness about an industry or a business, um, whatever their experience might be. Um, the idea is to get them a little deeper and more connected into um, like engaging their interest. And then career launch is, is what this discussion is really seated in is um, an opportunity that brings um, a young individual or an adult um, the opportunity to learn like the academic side of it, but also apply it to um, the work, the workplace. Um, yeah. And then there's a credential um, connected to that. Um, and in, in the Career Connect Mo Washington model, um, we're looking for those to be paid work experiences so that it's equitable. Many people can't do this without pay um, in their, their situation. So um, are there any other questions around that? There's those three areas, career awareness, career prep, and career launch. Thank you, Angie, I appreciate that. Uh, I think that's extremely helpful uh, for our, our audience of uh, business owners as well. Um, I, I do want to move this question to Dr. Schroyer at Edmonds College. Uh, and this is more specifically tied to uh, how can a business support education and attracting and developing uh, interest in high demand sectors for credential pathways? Uh, more specifically, is it uh, the certification piece, the training, uh, traditional two to four year credentials? Uh, Dr. Shore, can you speak to uh, how businesses can support that effort? Oh, we have to unmute, unmute the, the phrase of the last two years. That is a great question again, and thank you for um, catching my mute. Uh, I think, once again, terrific question. And so when we're looking at that, we have to look at this from multiple perspectives. And I think actively engaging in the process with the community um, college partners, particularly Edmonds College, as um, Seth said, and this is very important, this is a, about communication. We can develop the programs that support industry, but we have to know what's needed. And we have the leverages and the resources to do this. And I think Lynn also mentioned that. There's a, communication is really, really important. And each of these programs are different. There's a lot of programs out there. There's a lot of need out there. And so making sure that the programs that we do develop work for industry is essential. Otherwise our programs are not very helpful. So that communication, that dialogue, that relationship, I think is the first thing that we wanna focus on. 
Um, the next thing I think we need to focus on is creating those accessible pathways. This was also mentioned by both Lynn and Seth. We need to provide ramps for people to participate regardless of what industry they're in. And we need to make that accessible. I think the other thing that we also really need to do is look at the credentials that are needed. Do people really need a four-year degree or do they need a 60, or 60 credit certificate? What are we trying to accomplish? What skills and knowledge do people need to perform the job well and be effective? And I think we need to rethink how we're marketing that. We also need to rethink who we're marketing it to. We know that there's a need. We know we're not satisfying workforce needs right now, particularly in manufacturing and many other areas, biotech. So how can we satisfy the need? How can we think outside the box? And how can we partner with one another to do that? Um, we need to look at expanding more youth opportunities in high school and linking that with college. There's lots of opportunities, lots of programs out there. And then we also need to look at support services and wraparound services for people who don't have the same luxuries that other people do. They need support while they go to school or while they do the apprenticeship program. So all of those things are very, very important moving forward. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ferrer. That was excellent. And I uh, just want to highlight, I am uh, definitely thankful for Edmonds College. You are also uh, great investors in EASC's efforts as well. So uh, we appreciate that. Seth, ATS, I have a question for you. So um, can you talk a little bit about the benefits of having your current ATS program uh, and how has it impacted your culture? <clears throat> Uh, and bringing this program on. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I could talk a long time, I think, about the benefits uh, of having the apprenticeship program, but I, I try to focus on two usually when I when I try to keep it short, right? Um, and the first one, I like that Andrew showed some of this data to begin with, because we, we kind of, we look at that a lot when we talk about giving people great careers, um, but but we really give good career opportunities that in a lot of cases, people would not otherwise have. Um, one, one of the reasons I came to ATS was when I first visited, I met with, with several of the leaders and, and it was clear that that was something that they wanted that was important to them. Uh, and it's important to me, you know, we give good opportunities. And the second one is, is more really just, uh, just the meeting the needs of the business. We, we help meet our workforce needs. Once again, the, the information that Angie shared is, is spot on, that we have a big need, right, for, for skilled people, and not just short-term, but long-term. And the apprenticeship program helps us get there. So to date, uh, since we launched the program, we have graduated 87 apprentices into the mechanic pool. Um, and that's a, that's a really big percentage of our, of our workforce on the floor now, and that's growing. And that's not just that's not just bodies, you know, people that are just filling the position, but that's people that have been brought up right from day one. Um, you know, we get people from all over the place uh, that that may commit as mechanics already, and sometimes they work out really well, and that's great. But it's really cool when we can teach them the values that we want to see. We can teach them some of the work ethic things um, from day one. Some of the re really important things to us: the safety and the quality. Uh, when we teach that from day one, especially when they're, you know, say we get a Snow Isle grad uh, fresh out of high school, uh, they learn those things. And by the time they're a mechanic, they're a really, really good mechanic. Um, and then uh, you asked, I think, about, about culture. The way that affects the culture is, is a little bit of a slow change, I guess I would say. Um, but, it's a, but it's a positive feedback loop because we get these 87 mechanics that are now on the floor that have been brought up right, and they are now some of the people that are that are um, you know investing time into our new apprentices that are coming through the door today. Um, so the people that we get are are continuously getting a, a better and better experience as they come through. So that's really how we change the culture, and it's not not an overnight thing. Obviously, it, it takes time, but as the years have gone by, you know, a couple of years that we've done this now, um, things have improved. We've seen positive cultural changes. And, and that's how we do it. Well, that's excellent. I, I, I know I saw firsthand during our uh, visit uh, recently, uh, the culture and the energy there. So really appreciative of, of that um, explanation of it, Seth. I do have uh, an additional double question for Lynn and Aaron. And so I'd like to ask, uh, 
both of you uh, this question. Number one, how did AJAC deal with the pandemic and, and transition as far as how you served uh, uh, your customers and clients? And then additionally, what are some of the ways in which you've been able to work in Snohomish County specifically? And so I lied, there's a third question here. Uh, so take notes. Uh, have other regions leveraged their CCW networks, uh, K through 12, higher education, uh, workforce council partners? So Lynn, Aaron, take it away. Okay, um, I'll try to remember all those. But um, first, first I wanna acknowledge, I see uh, Matt Poish back on from c -like Plastics. He is actually a uh, AJAC committee member. Uh, he's with, been with AJAC for a while. Um, he has participated in both our youth and our apprenticeship, um, our apprenticeship programs and uh, has really been helpful on our committee to be able to vet the programs and to be able to bring that employer perspective uh, to our committee as we expand out. So hello, hello Matt, uh, it's good to see you. Um, so uh, the pandemic, yes, um, you know, so normally AJAC, we provide over, we. Pre-pandemic, pre, pre we provided over 30 uh, plus face-to-face -face classes per quarter across the state of Washington. Uh, and we have a pool of about 50 plus part-time instructors who, are, uh, who work part-time with us, but are actually working full-time in industry. So when the pandemic hit, uh, we like all of our other educational partners had to shift uh, to remote uh, learning, um, you know, and that could be a challenge for uh, the type of learners that that apprenticeship uh, see, uh, usually attracts because they like the hands-on uh, piece of the of the learning. So we have the theory part that we converted, uh, you know, to online. And because, you know, a lot of the companies were shut down and stuff, some of the apprentices were laid off. But what we did is we uh, committed to continuing that that theory portion of the training. So as the economy opened back up, um, they were they had still been getting the theory and then they can go back to get that structured on the job training piece. Uh, so being able to convert within about a four week period all while we were all moving to remote learning at, at, at home, um, it, it was a little bit of a challenge, but um, it actually helped us because we had been talking probably for about a couple of years about maybe transitioning some of the some of the learning to online. Uh, and the challenge was to be able to keep the high quality uh, piece of that learning um, as we transitioned uh, to online. So, you know, it was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we got a great staff, just like a lot of the other educational partners do, and we were we were able to do that. And I'll and I'll pitch it over to Aaron uh, to be able to talk about um, you know youth apprenticeship because that I think that program was hit the hardest during the pandemic. Yeah, I, uh, it will be yeah, exactly. The youth apprenticeship program was the hardest hit, uh, mainly just you know if, if, if employers are going to be needing to let people go, it tends to be some of the more the junior level um, personnel, of course. But you know, even though many of our employers were unable to hire some of these high school students at the time, they were still incredibly supportive. They offered virtual tours. They offered to you know interview with some of the apprentice with the uh, potential apprentices. They wrote letters to support, help support some um, further funding. And, and furthermore, I just wanted to have a couple examples of some current apprentices that are in Tohomish County that started the youth, apprentice, um, youth apprenticeship in a production technician um, program. And they've continued to thrive through their, with their employers that they actually signed them on into the adult programs, um, two of which are former Snow Isle students. Thank you, Wes. Um, and uh, yeah, these apprentices are on their way to becoming journey level machinists and tool and die makers before the age of 24. And they're, yeah, they're just thriving. They're doing very, very well. The employers wanted to keep these guys on throughout and um, they're excellent stories. Hope to have a lot more of those now that things are starting to tick upward, thankfully, um, not just in Snohomish, but across the, uh, the state. So uh, it's, it's been, it's very exciting to see those guys and it gives me hope keep going. <laughs> and, and then to address, thanks, Aaron, and then to address, you know, uh, what are we working on in, in relations to Snohomish County? Um, you know, we have had youth apprenticeship up there 
uh, for, for a while now. So we continue to work with our uh, employers, local employers and school districts. Um, and I appreciate what uh, Dr. Schroyer said also is that, you know, apprenticeship, if you don't have employers to, at the table, you don't have apprenticeship, right? So uh, we continue to work with, with employers, you know, and some are coming on and they're starting with youth apprenticeship and they're expanding out into the more advanced occupations. Uh, so we continue along that vein. Uh, our pre-apprenticeship program, which is called Manufacturing Academy, it's a 10 week program that provides individuals the, the fundamental skills to be able to get their foot in the door into industry, um, you know, and then hopefully they will progress through continued education and training uh, through apprenticeship or some other fashion. But uh, during the pandemic, actually, we've had the opportunity to finally have some residents of Snohomish County participate in our uh, Manufacturing Academy, our pre-apprenticeship program, uh, because we went virtual. Um, and so it was a partnership between Snohomish County, uh, Pierce County, King County and I believe Yakima uh, County. And we had our pre-apprenticeship program virtually. Uh, we sent out kits uh, to, to individuals. So it wasn't just theory and everybody doing Zoom Doom, uh, you know, for four or five hours a day, but they actually had projects that they were able to work on in their house, um, you know, and to be able to get those skills um, that are very important, um, you know, to be able to continue. So. Um, so we continue that, uh, that, that manufacturing academy um, uh, pre-apprenticeship. We're also working with uh, Workforce Nohomish on a new Career Connect grant to survey logistics uh, in relation to manufacturing companies. Uh, and we continue to work um, on the registered apprenticeship side um, you know, with opportunities, providing opportunities and pipelines. We use the pipelines of youth apprenticeship, uh, our Career Connect um, and uh, pre-apprenticeship uh, to be able to build up the workforce uh, in Snohomish County, and um, you know, and then, and, and then with regards to what other regions are doing to leverage Career Connect uh, networks, high school, uh, K through 12 higher education, um, you know, AJAC, we believe that we can't do anything without partnerships, right? We we can't do this by ourselves, um, and one of the best ways to uh, to be able to expand out and to try and to start uh, new programs is through. Uh, is through the different partnerships. Um, and so, and, and integrating the systems that are out there, right? Uh, K through 12 functions as K through 12 higher education, you know, and, and what we uh, originally saw were that these organizations were doing what they needed to do, but it was siloed. But Career Connect actually has allowed us to, uh, to, to kind of integrate those systems and to be able to pull together our resources to be able to provide, you know, what is needed in the current community. Um, and an example of this is, uh, you know, Yakima Valley, where we had apprenticeship, uh, programs there, but they declined. Uh, but we had an opportunity to receive a Career Connect grant in partnership uh, with the WDC and the K through 12 system there and the employers there. And so not only did we um, expand and start two new youth apprenticeships uh, there, but we were able to uh, restart our apprenticeship program. And we also have a uh, manufacturing academy or pre-apprenticeship um, there also. I mean, so you know, um, I, I really do uh, appreciate the Career Connect uh, community. Um, and we've also taken our pre-apprenticeship and we've kind of flexed it. Um, and so we're actually working with currently incarcerated youth through DCYF um, and the JR program to be able to provide that pre-apprenticeship program. Uh, originally, it was just 12 weeks of in-class in instruction, but we actually have added 12 weeks of paid internship. Uh, to be able to talk about what I think Angie was talking about. Um, and so we then we took that and we duplicated that uh, also with Career Connect uh, partnerships. And we're also working with Truman High School and Opportunity Youth and the Boys and Girls Club of King County to be able to do the same thing, to have that 10 week or 12 week program and then 10 to 12 weeks of paid internship to be able to get individuals in that pipeline. Um, you know, so I really uh, want to express uh, the value and the need of partnerships and for agencies to be able to partner, um, you know, together to, so that we can provide more access and opportunity uh, for individuals, be they youth or be they, you know, adult learners and stuff. So, and Aaron, I don't know if you wanted to add in. I, I was talking a lot. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I'll give> my... <laughs> no, I mean, I, no, I think you, I, you're hitting all our good parts to so make sure we have other you know, answers for our time for answers from the audience. Um, I, yeah, just, I will just say we did get, we do work with about 38, 40 different um, businesses in Snohomish County right now. 
and of course looking to expand that at all times. So if you're you know, uh, definitely doing that plug as we're doing our fall recruitment, um, you know, but I, I enjoy working and, and expansively across, across the county. So if you right. aren't working with me already, let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, so we do have a question uh, from Wes, and I think this is just tied to uh, the age group that uh, you all are engaging. Uh, are you seeing an opportunity, and please feel free to, to speak up as, as you wish, are you seeing an opportunity to work with uh, those who are under 18 a little better in this space? So feel free to chime in. Um, I mean, I, for for uh, for AJAC, we definitely have. Um, we went the uh, registered apprenticeship route for the youth piece of that, but also, as I just alluded to, are working with youth um, as young as 16, um, be it pre-apprenticeship um, or youth apprenticeship. Um, so that opportunity has allowed us to reach uh, uh, young people younger. I think the average age of our uh, AJAC apprentice was 33 before we started youth apprenticeship in 2017. And it's come down to 27. Um, so we're reaching individuals a lot younger, you know, and some of our, you know, some of our youth that complete the youth apprenticeship program, most of them already know that they want to go to a four year institution, but they say that having this experience of actual real, real world on the job experience, um, you know, is going to help them become better engineers. Um, but we also have other youth that um, say, hey, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know that this was out there. Um, you know, they didn't know what they didn't know, uh, but participating in these type of programs, whether it's our programs or other career launch programs, it's been able to expose them to the career pathways of, of industry. And so they might be a little bit more focused and we are seeing a lot of the youth transition into the more advanced uh, occupations, you know, so by about 21 or 22, they're graduating as journey level individuals, uh, being able to, you know, be self-sustaining with having their own place, which their parents are like, yay, um, their own transportation and all that kind of stuff in a good career. Um, you know, so those we, we have seen that opportunity um, through youth apprenticeship, but also through Career Connect opportunities to be able to reach individuals a little bit younger. And also employers wanted that. They wanted to be able to reach those, you know, a younger, you know, the, the young people coming out of, of our K through 12, you know, systems and reaching them while they're in school, right? Um, and, and introducing them to whichever industry uh, the employer comes from so that, you know, the kids, the kids know the opportunities that are out there. All right, does anyone else want to chime in after Lynn? Uh, uh, did a great and immense job at uh, answering that question. <laughs> I thought I saw a hand up somewhere. Was that, I, I see Dave Bowen from ATS. Dave, if we can get you or, uh, Katie, if we can get Dave to be unmuted there, give him a chance to chime in. There we go. Thank you. I like the uh, the discipline of the process. Very cool. So I was uh, texting Wes uh, and Lynn. Maybe we can partner on this, but uh, pre apprenticeship at Snow Isle from their aviation program into our program here. Um, I, we have a very similar program under the U.S. Department of Labor in Kansas City, because in Missouri, the US DOL oversees apprenticeship. So we partnered with uh, Northland Career Center, who has a very similar program to Snow Isle. And when those people come to us from uh, Northland in our Kansas City location, we can grant them credit for the hours that they've already spent in pre-apprenticeship. And it gives them a, you know, really a really good head start. So, um, I think that would be, I would love to see that as a pipeline into ATS. So, and, and you know, Dave, we're always down to partner. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I hear that the program at Snow Isle is fantastic. Is. Um, you know, so even if you need us, you know, you need some maybe cons consulting or whatever from us or whatever, um, you know, but I know that their program is outstanding up there. But any way that we can help, we're, we're, we're there to be able to help. Well, our pro, you know, our program has roots in your program, right? We did this with you before. We're grateful for the support you've always given us. And uh, there may be an opportunity there for us. And just in a bigger picture, uh, Snow Owl got some national recognition through ATEC, uh, through the Choose Aerospace. And now we're working on a whole battery of CBTs that would cover their general 
portion of a and p school but and wes may want to elaborate but they were one of the because of kareem and we know crystal at atec uh got some visibility there so that was really really good so that would be uh really good to have because when we started working with snow Island in like 2005 that was our plan mm -hmm. just to have a pipeline either to us or to everett and it's it's working now but it'd be great if we could uh, you know set it up so that we can give them credit when they come in because they oh, put okay. out some really good students really good really good kids so anyway thank you gary thank you for letting me speak hey thanks Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. And I think that was a great context there. I want to give each of you a chance to kind of leave some closing remarks, words of wisdom, or just a general uh, excitement for potential connections down the road. So uh, we'll go in the order by which I introduced you all again. So uh, Seth, you get the, uh, the stage to give some final remarks to our group. Sure. Thanks, Gary. Um, yeah, I mean, thanks for, for having us on uh, from ATS today. Um, but I would just say uh, conversations like this are, are important to keeping the ball rolling because uh, the data that I, I, co I go back again and again to the data that Andrew showed at the beginning. Like I said, we look at that stuff all the time, too, and we see the challenge uh, every day when we look for people. Right. Um, you know, we, we need good people. And that's really what makes both the organization and the, and the community you know, thrive, right? Both, both thrive and be well balanced. So, um, so conversations like this are good. They're helpful to, to making the connections we need, I think, to, to move in the, to move in the needle a little bit in the right direction. So that's all I'll really say. I'll close with that. Um, we're, we're happy to, to see some progress that we've had uh, both internally at ATS. And like I said, with our partnerships, uh, many of you on, on here are partners. So we're thankful for that. And we look forward to, to continuing that together. Thanks, Seth. Um, and I think I'll close by saying the statistics show that graduate apprenticeships or graduates from an apprenticeship program earn a higher wage, they have a more stable work record, and they're promoted more quickly and more often than workers who haven't completed an apprenticeship. And the stats that Angie showed with all of us today show that we're not, we're not supplying that workforce. We need to look at all options with that, and we all need to work together to satisfy that workforce because we don't have enough high school graduates. We have displaced workers as well that we need to incorporate this and our programs need to address all of those folks and bring everyone into the, the, these programs so we can build programs. And once again, it takes the partnerships. We all want to provide these living wage jobs for our community. We need to provide programs that actually support industry, and we need that communication and that partnership at all levels to do that. And we want to be that partner, just like everybody else on this panel. And and I would say, hold on, how much how much time do I have? Okay, because you know I can talk a long time, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'll just close by reiterating what what uh, Dr. Schroyer said, and 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 that I think partnerships are important. I am always disheartened when I see statistics, statistics or hear of employers that are hiring people from outside of Washington State to be because they can't find the trained workforce that they need. There are um, there are so many resources in Washington State, and if we can get them to you know talk to one another to be able to understand what the industry needs, I think that I know that we can uh, provide the workforce that employers across the state of Washington needs. Uh, what we need to remember is that not there's not uh, one size that fits all, right? We have three different types of apprenticeships here represented. Um, we at AJAC, we like thinking outside of the box to say, you know, what else can we do, um, you know, and to partner with individuals and companies and, 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 and um, you know, CBOs, community-based organizations to be able to, to to meet the needs of employers, but what we need is employers um, to be able to let us know what they need. And it is a challenge, um, you know, keeping up with technology and stuff like that. But I think that that's something that through partnerships um, that we are able to, to overcome. So, you know, if your employers are out there, if you're an employer out there, uh, you know, that needs some help, uh, AJAC, we serve over 400 apprentices annually. My goal is a thousand, which freaks our uh, staff out, but I think that we could do that. 
in the in the lanes that we operate and we work with over 300 uh, employers in the state of Washington, but considering there's about 6500 manufacturing employers in the state of Washington that's just really scratching the surface, you know so you know employers if you're here. These programs the colleges you know and and individual employers and stuff, there are opportunities for you to be able to train your workforce to be able to get that workforce that you need. And you can do it through partnerships so many resources out here, um, you know, uh, and and you know any any way that we can share uh, those resources with you and apprenticeship might not be a good fit you might you know have a better print, uh, you know uh, a partnership with a college for what you need but. You know, um, I will put our, our website in there and contact information if you need to, to contact us for more information. And if we're not the fit, we can definitely point you in the direction where we think that you can uh, get the help that you need. So Gary, thank you uh, for the for the invite. Um, Seth, nice to meet you. Uh, Dr. Schroer, nice to meet you. Dave and all everybody else, nice to see you. And thank you for uh, all for participating in, 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 uh, in today's uh, coffee chat. All right, Aaron, do you want to give some final thoughts? Okay. Well, folks. Oh. Thank you. I really All appreciate right. this. Yeah, no, it's been great. And I, I've been attending a lot of these coffee chats. So I'm really glad to be a part of one and exactly what Lynn said, we're here. So. Well, I, I want to make sure that we give uh, STEM a shout out. So Angie, I'm going to put you on the spot just to give a final uh, uh, remark from, from your end as well. So Angie, if you can chime in. Thank you, Gary. Um, I just dropped in the chat. Um, you all are welcome to join us for regular Career Connect meetings um, and STEM Network meetings in partnership with Northwest ESD. My colleague Jenny Veltri is on here. Um, she leads the Northwest STEM, um, so the other four counties in our Career Connect region. And then Sinead Fitzpatrick Plaguey is our Career Connected Learning Coordinator. Um, you all will get a chance to meet her. She's out there working working it, um, connecting with business into these um, resources and just helping build our network and those connections that Lynn was speaking to that are so critical to making this all happen. Um, and I just, I know most of you on here, I wanna thank you all for your engagement over the last three years that I've been with this organization. Um, it's complex work, um, but I think we're making really great grounds and I appreciate the employer engagement and input um, to making them really relevant training program. So thank you for the opportunity, Gary. All right, no problem. You know, I really think this has been a robust conversation. Uh, we also, as Katie mentioned, looks like we made some direct connections there. I was uh, alluding to Angie that, you know, this is a great opportunity to develop uh, some matchmaker uh, pieces so that we make sure that our businesses are having those conversations with the right folks. Uh, as they grow ATS with their uh, programming and others. Uh, AJAC obviously having an amazing component to this connection, uh, STEM, and then obviously uh, Dr. Schroyer and Edmonds College. So I wanna thank you all. And I think the my parting shot here is simply that you all are the connecting piece to people living out their, their dreams. And that means being able to have the quality of life that all of us dream of. And so it starts with, with this training. It starts with that connection to business uh, skills and talent. And so I don't take it lightly when you're doing this work. And I say this to my team all the time, you're really uh, changing Snohomish County and Washington State for the better when you engage these young folks and, and bring them into your, your businesses and your spaces. Uh, I, I think there was a guy by the name of Matthew who once said, and I'll paraphrase, uh, if you give a person a fish, uh, you feed them for a day. If you, get, if you teach a person to fish, uh, you feed them for a lifetime. And I think this is the work that you all are, are immersed in and we really need to continue to push that workforce component to that. So I want to thank you all for joining us, our awesome panelists, and our uh, dedicated investors and business owners here. So again, thank you to AJAC, ATAS, and Edmonds College uh, for our coffee chat here. Um, I believe we have some news before you all go. So August 26th, we're having a outdoor event, which is our summer networking from four to seven. Uh, again, it's outdoors and we will be adhering to uh, any COVID uh, uh, 
responses that we need to have there. But guess what? We have some interesting pieces coming out of this event. So we'd love it if you all would try to attend. Again, it will be from four to seven on August 26th. At, and then next Tuesday, uh, we actually have employment law and your liability as another coffee chats moment, August 24th. And that's from uh, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. So please, please continue to join us and, and engage us at EASC. We really appreciate your involvement today. Thanks everyone, coffee cups in the air and have a great, 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 great day. Take care.